and Gemma from Play to Learn Preschool. Thanks for joining us on a Friday afternoon. Hey, if you're down in Florida, we were just um, eating lunch and watching the news and thinking about you guys. Stay safe. And Georgia. And Georgia too. Man, that thing's a brute. Um, hey, check in with us though. If you, we know that there are a lot of um, preschool teachers who join us on Facebook Live from Florida. So we're thinking about you. Make sure you check in and let us know that you're okay um, after the weekend. So. Hi everybody, it's Friday afternoon and our routine, are we going to call it that because it's been two weeks in a row now, it's our second yes. week of school. This is a routine. <laughs> we did it last year too. We were That's pretty good. Okay. Our routine is on Friday afternoons um, that we take our center plans, our scope and sequence for the year, and we change out all of our centers, our weekly centers. Mm -hmm. And so what we thought we would do on Facebook Live on Friday afternoons is share them with you. Or at least this Friday afternoon, because that's what we're here doing. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Lachey. Hey, Kristen. Are you on a hurricane break? Stay safe. Yikes, you guys. That thing looks so... And they're still watching us. That thing looks so crazy. Stay safe. Yeah. Okay. So we thought we would share with you... Oh. <laughs> I left it on my desk. Our unit plans. Okay, hold on. So yesterday on Facebook Live, we told you how we kind of have a mapped out for the year. And we do it for the year because we've been doing this for a very long time and we are um, kind of on autopilot in terms of planning. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, and in the beginning, we would just do it by the month to month. But here we are. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Lachey. Um, we plan it out for the year at this point because we've been doing it for so long. And so what we have is just... Our plan for September for dramatic play, sensory table, science, light table, blocks, literacy, math, and then a couple of other things. And we just have ideas that are hyperlinked so we can remind ourselves. Hi, everybody. Um, get back to class. You shouldn't be watching us in the middle of class. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Um, and so then we just go through, Gemini, on Friday afternoon. It's like a race. See, the, the thing is, I start something and then I get distracted and she goes and finishes it or the other check, way Check, check, check. We try to see how fast we can check everything off so that we can get our weekend started. And today we were under 20 minutes. It wasn't bad. So I fast. started one thing and then Jamie was like, why is this out? Oh, I got distracted. It's so okay, but I finished else. it. Anyway, so we're gonna give you a little tour of some of the centers that we have set up for the week. The way that our classroom runs is that the students have from about nine o'clock until 11 o'clock to do centers. I kind of like to think of it as like a museum. <laughs> like. The Please Touch Museum, Please where touch. we set up all of these amazing invitations to play, kind of like an exhibit at a museum. And, and that's we just, exactly what it looks like at the end, too. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can just kind of choose which ones to go to. So we, um, of course, invite them to do certain things, but we do not require them or time them or make them rotate through the centers. We feel like we can meet all of their needs at any of the centers that we have set up. So, hi! Okay, we're pleased to be back too. We are excited to be back. Mm -hmm. Hey Erica. Hi everybody. Okay, so we're gonna show you six. I, did we count six? Six yes, centers. Six. Now the way that this works if you're joining us for the first time is I usually flip the camera around and Gemma does the- I'm the preschooler. I was gonna say Vanna White. Oh, okay, I'll go with that. Okay, she's gonna do the Vanna White impersonation of hmm. all of our centers and I will kind of um, yeah. narrate them. And answer questions. And answer questions because I can see the comments. So go ahead and leave questions if you have them for us. And we are happy to have you. Okay, so the first one we're gonna show you is right where we're sitting, which is a big round table, has six or eight chairs, and we have it set up as a literacy slash fine motor center. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show it to you. Okay, here it goes. This is the tricky part. All okay. right, so I had the camera plugged in. Let me see if I can. Ah, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So this is our literacy, and there's where my camera's plugged in, fine motor center. And at this center, we have printed some fine motor dots, which are just papers with circles on them and some pictures. And they're in these little plastic things. Yeah, we just Otherwise, got tired of laminating. Yeah, and it just protects them. And what the children do is we have these little baskets of uh, glass beads, red glass beads, and they just make the shape of the letter with any kind of manipulative. So we have the pre-K students at the beginning of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that's why we have glass beads out because they're four, four and a half, five years old, so no problems. But then on Wednesday after school, we'll probably change these out for some soft pom poms or something that our younger kids um, will be safe with. So we printed the first letter of their names 
on these papers and they can just, look, there's Henry's H. Hey, Henry. So they're just working on one-to-one -one matching with their fine motor skills and making letters. And then we'll also probably point out the letter sounds. H is for honey and Henry. Okay, and then over here is our light center, and the camera always does a weird thing because it's so bright. But we've been working on color sorting. So last, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So last week we did those ice cube trays, and they were sorting the pom poms. And this week we have these the little plastic small links. Links. They were actually from the dollar store. They were in the dress up play area, like the jewelry, like the little girls or little boys. Because you can hook them together. You have to make necklaces. Yeah. And so the bottom of this tray, maybe Jen will be able to pick it up and kind of show you, is just a triple tray again from the dollar store. And we just put some um, tissue paper underneath, pink, green, and purple, to try to help them with the sorting. Um, so yeah, if, the, if they're all out, you can kind of see that it's pink underneath. So they can practice their fine motor skills and just hook those little links together. They could do some patterning and then sorting of course so just another easy it's only the second week of school we're just trying to ease them into the routine somebody asked if we required everybody to go to every center we do not we encourage them but we do not require them we hope it's going to be in interesting enough that they want yeah to we try to make it so cool that they can't pass it up and then our sensory bin filler for september is plain white rice we're last week a lot of rice there's everywhere. a lot of rice i'm going home with pockets of rice hey kim hi you guys thanks for sharing the video lucila we appreciate it um, and then last week we just had scoops and little bowls, so they're just getting used to keeping the sensory bin filler inside the sensory table. This week we added funnels because that's a really fun um, way to explore the sensory table. Kim says hi, Gemma. Hi. <laughs> um, so it's just a fun way for them to explore the sensory materials. Again, we're just trying to get them in the habit of how to use the, each center, um, how to keep the materials in, and then of course how to clean it up when it gets on the floor. So back over here by our guinea pig, oh there's a blanket there, but we have these little dust pans and brooms and so we're just teaching them, you know, if it gets on the floor, which it does, then they just um, use the dust pan and clean it up. And our guinea pig, she's coming out of her house when the kids are here, she hides. <laughs> our science table we change again every week. Last week it was um, sense of sight, things that you can see with your eyes. So this is sense of hearing, you have the Good to have a, have a stethoscope. Where can you buy these from? I don't know. No, we, I think we've been handed these over the years by. Yeah, yeah, different nurses well. and people have given them to us. So just different things that they can uh, fake a pretend phone. That's not a fake phone. It's a real phone without a battery in it. Um, and then we were actually talking because our root rule at school really is that the kids are not allowed to take things out of the drawers. Yeah. Um, you know, that they're supposed to just kind of play with what we have set out for them and then if they need something else like they have an idea for play and they need something they can ask us for it but because it's the first week of school they're having a hard time with that they want to dump everything so we actually probably need to flip we this flip so we might flip this yeah. bookshelf around so that they can't get to it so we'll outsmart them and then over here is our block area and this week we added these really long ramps and wooden balls from Kodo Kids so we're excited to show those to our to our students um, they can just set them up. It's a lot of loose parts. I think we showed these in our class, in our classroom tour. Um, but we're going to introduce these to our preschoolers, and they can just build tunnels and ramps and just exploring with force and oh, you got it, exploring with force and motion. So um, that's the addition that we made to our block center. And our um, dramatic play area is a basic kitchen home living area for the month of. September, but we're going to do a few small additions just to try to get them used to playing over here. So for this next week, it's still just a plain kitchen, but we added just a couple of props, um, some ketchup and mustard bottles. They're That's most, the they are pretty cute, Melissa and Doug, and then some little wooden hamburgers and hot dogs. So we're just trying to get them interested in playing at the different centers, and it gives us an invitation to play and an opportunity to come over here and show them um, how, how things work in the kitchen. And hi, oh, I'm glad you could join us for a live video, you guys. Hi. And then we just put a little cleaning set over here, too, because they, love they do love cleaning. And our students who come at the beginning of the week, hey, Catherine. Oh, thanks for joining us. Um, the students who come at the beginning of the week, a lot of them are returning students. So we just try to add a few simple props. You don't have to make dramatic play a huge ordeal. Um, you don't have to make it a huge ordeal every week. 
so we just added a few small props just to spice it up. And then this is our math center. It's very similar to the light table. It is. Because Colors, yeah. it's, it's a, because then they, they can get the hang of it over there and over here as well. Right? Like, hey, wait, I remember how to do this. Okay, so I learned many years ago yes. that if you stick the color on the inside, they're going to pull it off. <laughs> so I we always stick bottom. everything on the bottom of our clear, those clear trays are from the dollar store also the in the, um, like the utensils and the silver aisle or whatever so um, and then these are just little plastic rubber um, apples they were in an addition set that we got from Scholastic forever years ago um, but you could use mini erasers you could use pom-poms um, you could use you know sorting chips or anything like that and so it's just a color sorting and counting activity so that's our classroom we're all set up ready for next week so we can just pop in I can get this set back up so we can just pop in on Monday, and the things that we have left to plan for next week are, hold on, let me see if I get the camera, we need a cameraman. The things that we have left to plan. So a couple of people yesterday asked us, like, don't you have to do specific learning objectives and things? And the answer is yes. Um, we do those with our mini lesson for circle time, and I plan those out by our unit. So we're gonna be starting probably the five senses. I think we're ready with the older kids. I think, oh, absolutely. Um, and then we plan our story that we're going to read to them, and we plan the art project. So those are the three things that we have left to plan for next week. Um, and we do write kind of specific objectives for those. So this week we taught our older kids, the little ones not so much, but the older kids did magic Play-Doh the first day, and we did the Picasso art project with the glue stick. So next week we're going to do some watercolors. We're going to teach them how to use watercolors, and we're going to teach them how to use scissors. Check, check. <laughs> That's such a joke because the scissors thing is like an all year thing, but we're gonna introduce it next week. So anyway, what's up the stairs is my house. <laughs> the kids ask the same question. What is up there? What is up those stairs? I like it's my kitchen and my family room. My, and, ooh, my TV's <laughs> up there. <laughs> I live upstairs. This is in my basement. So anyway, those are the centers that we have set up. Like I said, we really think of it, don't you think of it like exhibits, right? Like different yeah. invitations to play. So if they would like to try it, and sit and do that center for 30 minutes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. They try it, it's five minutes and they move on. Um, One of the tricks to get them to, to do the things you want them to do is you have to sit with them too. Oh yeah, we play you, right alongside we them. We sit down, we crawl around on our knees all day long. My knees are always in jeans. Oh my God, I'm too old for this. <laughs> the other thing is in our morning meeting, and if it's not the first week, because the first week is, you know what I mean, like we're just trying to get everybody on the same page. But the first- On the carpet. On the carpet, on the same carpet. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> but the that morning meeting when we sing our hello song and look at the calendar and then um, I always like, I would say like I pitch a center, like look how awesome this center is. Sometimes we all follow. We follow Miss Jamie and I'll show them how awesome it is um, just to kind of get them started. And what happens when the kids don't want to leave and others are waiting? So we're fortunate we have a very large classroom and a very small class size. So um, it usually works out, but what I say is that's an opportunity to teach them to negotiate. Um, so when we as teachers go in and say, oh no, only three kids are allowed here, you three have to wait, or I'm gonna time it, then we're really denying our kids the opportunity to learn how to negotiate space and supplies. And so we use that as a learning opportunity. There's only two seats at our writing center. What are you gonna do? What are you, are you gonna, gonna do? Solve your problem? And they'll say, I could bring another chair over. I say, okay. And then the fourth kid comes, what, am, what are you gonna do? They're like, I think I'm gonna have to wait until they're done. Because there's no space if I bring a chair. Right. Over. And well, then they, they try and bring a chair over and then they can't fit. And then Or like oh. you said, somebody's there too long, and so the kid will get frustrated and they're like, ah, oh, he's been there forever. So I was like, what are you gonna do? Um, and they say, I could go ask him if he's almost done. Good idea. Or I could set a timer and ask him to get up when that's done. And I, we really give the kids that opportunity to negotiate the space. That's the learning right mm -hmm. there. So we do not it's so easy to step in and say, I'll fix this, I'll fix this for you. You've got two but more minutes. It's not, it's not gonna help them. But we really think that that is the key to playing and learning, play to learn, is to give them those kinds of opportunities to negotiate with their peers and come up with solutions and compromises. That's what we want them to learn when they're here. So anyway, oh, your, your kids like the magic Play-Doh. 
Yay! I'm so glad. We liked it too. <laughs> my older kids, my school age kids, came down yesterday and said, did you have any extra magic playing? <laughs> they played with it after school. <laughs> anyway, we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe down there in Florida and Georgia. Check in with us when we come on, so on nervous Monday. Hope you guys. come on, on Monday. Please try and check in with us and let us know if you're okay. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, have fun. As always, playing and learning with your kids. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, everybody.